As you can see, I'm joined today by members of both chambers and both parties, including several members of House leadership. We're here today to announce the filing of legislation that would put a constitutional amendment on the ballot to let the people decide once and for all whether to allow expanded gaming within the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Senator Damon Thayer and I have been working for weeks on the specific language of this bill, as well as to build consensus within the General Assembly. We believe that we have fashioned something that could and should and hopefully will pass both chambers. We're confident for two reasons. One, because we believe that the General Assembly, although composed of diverse membership, will be able to look past differences to do what's best for the Commonwealth, just as Senator Thayer and I have been able to do. And two, because the issue of expanded gaming after nearly two decades of debate has reached a tipping point. Recently, the people of this state were polled by two separate organizations, including the state Republican Party. Both surveys found that more than 80% of the people of this state regardless of whether they support expanded gaming or are against it, want the right to vote on it. The question is simple. Do we as leaders listen to our people or do we ignore them? There are many arguments for and against expanded gaming, but there is no reasonable argument that can be made about the purpose of this amendment, which is simply to let the people decide. The language of this amendment is simple. One, it asks whether the people support letting the General Assembly authorize up to seven strictly regulated casinos, of which up to five would be at licensed racetracks. And secondly, it mandates in a general way where tax revenues from expanded gaming would be spent. And those areas are job creation, education, human services, health care, veterans programs, local governments, public safety, and support of the horse industry. As we all know, Kentucky's horse industry, one of our signature industries, is under attack by other states. Other states are using gaming revenues to boost purses and breeders' incentives to lure racehorses, brood mares, and stallions away from the bluegrass state. However, details on those questions, where to put the casinos, how to tax them, will be left up to the enabling legislation that would be put together further down the road, should the legislature approve this bill and should the people approve the gaming amendment. Why do I support this legislation? Not because gaming is an end unto itself, but because it's a mechanism that will allow us to keep at home in Kentucky hundreds of millions of dollars of Kentucky money now being spent in other states. A recent economic analysis estimated that Kentuckians spent $451 million in casinos in neighboring states in 2010. $451 million. Kentucky money. That money is being used to pay for all kinds of services and public infrastructure in those other states. As it stands, we might as well be backing trucks up to the Ohio River and dumping our people's money into the water. We need to keep that money at home. That same analysis estimated that under one scenario, the expansion of gaming in Kentucky could bring in $266 million in one-time license fees and an additional $377 million in tax revenues each and every year, annually, into the general fund. Those folks are significant dollars, and they are much needed here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. But that isn't only for me to decide, or even only for the 138 members of the General Assembly to decide. Rather, it's for the people of this state to decide. And by passing this amendment, the Kentucky General Assembly will finally let our people's voices be heard on this issue.